Good day. This is the first of five videos which have been prepared to accompany the training sessions on using the tax benefit micro simulation model MOSMOD. This first uh, video is a short in introduction to micro simulation in general and the MOSMOD model in particular. During the course of this session we will cover what is microsimulation, what is MOSMOD, what exactly does MOSMOD do, how does MOSMOD work, and then an, a final session where um, we'll outline what the rest of the training sessions will look like and the rest of the videos. Okay, let's start by looking at what microsimulation is. Mitten et al. have produced a very nice definition. Micro simulation models use micro data on persons or households, firms or other micro units and simulate the effect of changes in policy or other changes on each of these units. The differences before and after the change can be analysed at the micro level to show the overall effect of the change. So how can we show this diagrammatically? First of all you take a a, a household survey basically um, that has details of family structure, income and expenditure and then you apply to that household uh, survey a system of rules which reflect the policy systems on taxes and on social benefits and that generates an output file which allows one to assess the impacts on individuals um, in various ways. The impacts on poverty and inequality, the impacts on redistribution. OK, so what can micro-simulation models be used for? Micro-simulation can be used to answer questions such as how does the current tax and social benefit system impact on individuals in different groups, for example different income groups or different family types? And also, to what extent does the current system of social benefits reduce poverty and inequality? It's possible with a micro-simulation model to simulate the current situation with the current social benefit system switched on and also with them switched off and the difference will be the impact of the current system on uh, poverty and inequality. What would be the cost of implementing different social security policy reforms? For example, if you wanted to modify the rules to such and such a social benefit, um, how much would that cost? If you were wanting to introduce a new uh, cash transfer, how much would that cost? would also allow you to model how you might raise those resources through the um, taxes, direct and indirect, that you are simulating. And of course, when you introduce new policies, you can look at what the impact would be on poverty and inequality. OK, moving forwards, what is the relationship between MOSMOD and other um, microsimulation models. Well, MOSMOD is a static tax benefit microsimulation model, um, which is a particular kind of uh, microsimulation model which gives you the, so to speak, um, immediate impacts of reforms. It's based on an existing um, model platform called the Euromod platform, and the Euromod has been developed over a 20 year period by Professor Holly Sutherland and her colleagues at the University of Essex and is currently used in over 25 countries in Europe. Um, the um, Euromod platform is very flexible and there is a current UNU wider uh, collaboration of which MOSMOD forms part. And so I'll say a little bit about that um, collaboration. The collaboration is known as SouthMod and it's a collaboration between Essex University, UNU Wider and Southern African Social Policy Research Insights, which is called SASPRI. Um, 
It's a major research program which tax benefit micro simulation models for selected uh, developing countries in Africa and elsewhere have been built or are in the process of being built. The outcome of the work will be a set of models for individual countries and research papers that contain simulation analysis of tax and benefit reforms. And a, a, another important outcome that's not actually listed on this slide is that there will be um, training and support in getting these models used uh, in the respective countries by those interested in policy reforms. And that will include government um, as well as academia. SASPRI, as a Southern African organisation, is working with local partners to, to develop models for Mozambique, Tanzania and Zambia. And actually SASPRI has been working in the area of micro simulation and using the Euromod platform in developing countries for over 10 years now, starting with the model for South Africa, SA mod, and then later the model for Namibia, NAMOD. Um, and updating those models um, has been also part of SASPRI's South Mod activity. And together with um, the models for Mozambique, Tanzania, and Zambia, um, it means we've now got five models using the same platform um, uh, within the SADC region, which is really quite important. Okay, let's now talk a bit about the Mozambican model. It's a standalone user-friendly interface and the model workings are transparent with the user having full control over the simulations carried out. As I've indicated, that's really important to us um, and the South Mod um, collaboration because we're very keen that um, uh, these models are actually used in the countries um, uh, where they've been developed um, and used by um, policy makers themselves as well as academics and so forth without having to have recourse to commissioning expensive uh, um, uh, consultant based research in order to carry out simulations um, and the fact that the models are transparent and the fact that the user has full control over the simulations carried out um, is uh, en enables that to take place and obviously as, as we'll see through these training sessions one has to learn um, how to use the Euromod interface but having um, mastered it then it gives incredible power to the user. The current version 1.0 of MozMod is underpinned by the EOF 2008-9 but it can be um, updated with new data and policy reforms when required. Indeed the intention is that during this year the EOF 2014-15 will become the underpinning data set. Okay, talking about MOSMOD data, um, the first step, as you'll remember back in, in, in the slide I, uh, where I talked about microsimulation generally, the first step is to select and prepare um, an appropriate micro data set. Um, an appropriate micro data set will be data that has information on the incomes and expenditures of individuals in a representative survey of households. And as I've indicated, the current version of MOSMOD is underpinned by the EOF 2008-9, which represents the characteristics of the Mozambican population in that uh, year. The data is a representative sample of 51,177 people living in 10,832 households in Mozambique. And the weights from that survey are used to calculate national figures from the simulations. OK, the next step um, is to have a series of policy rules which can be applied to the individuals in the data to determine what social transfers they're entitled to and what taxes they should pay. So, first of all, in order to simulate a policy, we have to be able to translate the rules into a format that can be understood by the model. 
and we'll come to that during the course of these um, uh, uh, training sessions um, and make sure that we can collect the information needed to apply the rules um, from within the data set from within the EOF. But it has to be said that there are data constraints. The EOF wasn't designed to be the underpinning data set to MOSMOD and, and, and indeed there will be um, conditions of entitlement um, that apply to certain of the policies or to the taxes that are not contained within the data set and we have to um, make assumptions regarding those conditions when we develop uh, um, 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 policies within the model. And we have to make that those assumptions explicit and there's an accompanying country report that goes with the models which details the assumptions that we've had to make. That's part of that transparency I talked about earlier. The moment we've got policy rules for the year 2015 incorporated into MOSMOD version 1.0 but 2016 and 2017 will be added as part of this year's um, SouthMOD um, activity. Okay, so what policies have we got? Well, we have some social assistance and social insurance policies. Um, in particular, the social assistance policies of direct social support in the direct social support program um, and in the basic social support program. We've also got social insurance contributions modelled for the private sector and self-employed and for the public sector. And then in terms of direct and indirect taxes, we have income tax, that's the PAYE um, for people with income from salaries and wages, uh, so-called simplified tax, which is a turnover tax um, from self-employment if the annual turnover is less than 2.5 million metacals per annum. Then we have personal income tax from income for other sources other than PAYE, and those are the direct taxes. And then indirect taxes, we have excise duty for a limited number of items, alcoholic drinks, tobacco um, products, a fuel tax and a value-added tax. But part of this training will be to review any other policies that need to be implemented for 2016 and 2017. OK, that's the policies that MOSMOD currently simulates. Um, as I've indicated, there will be some uh, existing policies that are not simulated and they will be mainly because we don't have sufficient information in the EOF. But there may be ones that we can simulate that through the course of this training will be identified and can be incorporated, incorporated during the course of this year. Now, it is a static model, so it does not simulate changes in behaviour. So, for example, um, if you, um, if there was a social transfer that was uh, uh, implemented that um, uh, gave um, adults who were not in employment um, uh, um, some, some income, um, then it may well be that that income would st stimulate their opportunities of finding work and they would then use the money to seek jobs and get into, into work and therefore um, increase more t uh, revenue through paying taxes and also come off the system. Um, that's a behavioural um, impact. We do not cover behavioural impacts and the reason is that they require um, all kinds of assumptions that we can't be sure of and so we favour a static micro simulation model because we are then making the smallest number of assumptions. We can go on later and take the output of a static model and do other things with it as I'll indicate in a minute. It also doesn't take into account any macroeconomic effects. The focus is on the direct impact on households. However, as I indicated, the output from the model can be used as a starting point for more complex analyses involving behavioural change and micro-macro uh, uh, 
um, linkages. OK, that's what it can't do. Let's now start looking at the model itself. Um, that's the user interface. Um, I can, I, I'm going to show some of this live as well, so I can move to the next screen. And this is when you launch um, MozMod, this is what you see. When you press on the Mozambican flag, um, you then get um, a, a, a display of the different policies, and I'll explain those in more detail in a minute. I'm going to enlarge it slightly um, before coming back to the presentation. So that's exactly what I showed you in the actual live model. Um, remember we prepared data um, using the EOF. That takes uh, the form of a text file which is supplied with the model but new data sets can be added and existing ones amended and as I indicated we'll be doing that during the course of 2017. The model program stores all the model parameters and allows the user to make to changes and run simulations and that interface is where the parameters are described and where the changes are made and then the output in text format can be analysed using a statistical package or one of the built-in tools to generate um, some of that information that we were talking about, like the impact of policy reform on poverty and inequality. OK. Now, the user interface, I'll, I'll just go through this slide to indicate it in more detail and then go to the actual model and take you through that in a brief way. So first of all there are seven tabs along the top which open up to reveal a ribbon menu and we don't use many of the uh, tools that are in those tabs but I will briefly go through them in a second. Um, the tax benefit system for Mozambique um, for different policy years, in fact it's only for 2015 for Mozambique at the moment, um, is described in this column that's headed policy. Um, but they're all collapsed at the moment, so they just really list the policies. Um, again, I'll show you them in an uncollapsed way in a moment. And then there's the run MozMod uh, a, a button, which is used to uh, run uh, um, the the model and and again that will we'll, we'll go through that in, in a later training session okay let me now move to the model itself and show you some of those things first of all these tabs countries is, is this is where you are with countries display gives you various options relating to display um, we don't use many of these um, you can, for example, when you're producing a new system, a so-called reform system, switch on conditional formatting so that you can identify um, at a glance um, the changes you've made. And I'll talk about that again when I talk people through the model um, in, in, in the fifth of these videos. Then there are country tools where you can add a new system. This column here, MZ underscore 2015, is a system. Again, I'll talk about that in a later session. It's where you can delete a system as well. Um, those are two that we sometimes use, though there are other ways to add a system. Um, the up rating indices is probably the most important um, thing we use in this particular tab. Um, again, we'll go through that later. Then there are administration tools. Here the variables tool is the most important. Things like adding countries and so forth, very important for Euromod, not important for us. So that's probably the only administration tool we use. Add-ons. These are add-ons particularly for Euromod. There are some specific add-ons being developed for Southmod. Um, so at the moment we, these don't apply. Then applications. The opening the output data file net cell is one that we use a, a lot and the summary statistics is also being developed um, 
uh, specifically for South Mod and isn't yet functional. Okay, so there are the tabs, and that's back to the beginning. Here are all the policies, um, and there's a, a description of the policies in, in, in English. Now, if I widen that a little bit, I can actually show you that the policies themselves are actually quite elaborate, um, but this is not to um, terrify anyone, it's just simply to say that you simply click in a nested way to get down to the actual detail of the policy and then you can edit the policies in the cells as required. Um, so, so that's Okay, let's go further in the presentation. Um, how, how might MozMod be used? Well, we don't know um, um, specifically about Mozambique, but we can give some examples from how it's been used in South, South Africa. In South Africa, um, a youth benefit um, for the National Department of Social Development has been simulated. Um, um, a carer's benefit, a non-means tested universal pension, for, again for the Department of Social Development and National Treasury and most recently um, a non-means tested universal child benefit um, to, to replace the current um, means tested uh, child support grant that's available in, in South Africa. Um, particularly these last two are part of the um, plans to develop a more comprehensive social security system in South Africa and similar things might be um, applicable in Mozambique. Now that really concludes um, this session. In the, in, the, in the rest of the training course we'll, co we'll cover getting started with MozMod, the tax and benefit policies, introducing new policies and amending existing one, and analysing the output data. Um, there will be videos that accompany the first three of those bullet points, not the analysing the output data, but there will be a fourth video which is talking through the whole model um, so that uh, you'll have a, a permanent uh, oral record of that. But otherwise, thank you very much. These are the South Mod countries and their flags. Um, and that's the logos of the participants in the MOSMOD program. I should have specifically mentioned that the ILO are supporting the training um, in Mozambique. Thank you.